Hello everybody and welcome back to Stealing 33 Plays Shadowrun. I'm Stealing 33 and hello everybody. How's it going? Uh, so between episodes here, I, I got myself a new shirt. I now have three armor instead of one, which is great. And uh, I am, uh, I'm going to come back here. This guy sells uh, key stuff and I'm going to buy Ma uh, Manifest because I want it. And I think we're good to go. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Uh, the only thing that I couldn't find was I couldn't find somewhere to buy guns. Uh, there's a lady here who sells magic. Uh, this guy over here sells Decker supplies. This guy sells drones. Uh, but there were no guns. Couldn't find any guns. Uh, which was grump- which grumped me out a little bit. Uh, let's go down the hatch. Can we go talk to Engine Room Guy? Hey, Engine Room Guy! Ratcher! What up? It's oppressively hot down here, and the air is full of synthetic odors to grab you by the sinuses and refuse to let go. You smell the engine grease and metal meddling plastic, ionizing air, and, le and lead sold se lead solder. There we go. Whew, can't read today. A quick scan of the room tells you why. The downstairs tenant has converted the space into a machine shop. Metal fabrication tools and duraplast extruders line the walls, and a pair of heavy industrial manipulators hang in the ceiling. The man in the black trench coat stands with his back to you, staring at a monitor mounted. He addresses you without turning. Ah, I was wondering when I was, when I was going to meet my new neighbor. His voice is pleasant, cultured. There's a hint of Russian accent there, but it's buried under layers of nuance. Please, stay. Well, I, stay where you are. I'll be with you in just a moment. I, and unless you fancy an unplanned trip to the Chrome Alley, don't touch anything. There are all matter of tools in here that could take your hand to clean off. Take your time, I won't touch anything. Ah, uh, you're very kind, thank you. Um... Try to see what's on the screen. The feed on the monitor looks like some sort of di design software. You can see what appears to be a slim, spidery appendage in orthographic and perspective view. Very good, yes. That's coming along nicely. Very nicely indeed. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Wing. Steel Wing. Good to meet you. Ah, uh, do you know... And you as well. Now, tell me. What can I do for? His eyes trail off as a flash of motion catches his eye. With alarming speed, a sinister-looking drone scuttles uh, out from under the work table. Its movements are surprisingly agile and fluid. She rears back menacingly, spreading its four legs in a clear sign of aggression. Please, don't mind the drone. He can be... Uh, territorial. But, so long as you remain civil, he will not bite. Ratcher. My mechanical counterpart here is Koseki. Uh, Koski? Koski? Uh... Shake his hand. A pleasure. I'm very pleased to meet you, my friend. In a community such as Hioi, it's important to be on good terms with one's neighbors. Agreed. Speaking of which, I'd like to ask you some questions. Yeah, if you have the time. Very well. The morning casting should be cooling for a few minutes yet. That's time enough to talk. Uh, when you said morning casting, uh, what did you mean? Exactly what I said. A casting that I've made of a new locomotive assembly for Koski. A bio... Biomimetic design, as you can see. Uh, this one is inspiring by walking on legs of a de decapod, a crustacean, the mangrove crab, to be specific. Uh, so you're designing drone parts. And fabricating them, yes. Uh, how did you learn to do that? More training and experience than I care to mention. Drone architecture is one of my professions, you see. Now it's more of a calling. One that I'm free to pursue, now that I've been freed myself from the shackles of corporate servitude. Koski is a very interesting name for a drone. What's the fairy tale about? A thoroughly unpleasant person. Koski the Deathless was called, he was called, and for good reason. His soul was cleverly hidden outside of his body, and he could not be killed so long as he remained intact. Koski was a villain, and a notorious kidnapper of women. But something about them always struck me. Uh, stuck with me. I suppose that it was the notion of immortality through cleverness that resonated. There was something to be learned from that, I was sure. And so, when it came time to name my beloved creation, my first name, uh, it was the first name to come to mind. And is your drone deathless like his namesake? In a manner of speaking, I suppose that he is. I have redundant copies of every piece of his architecture, and his core programming is stored on a disk in a secret location. Should he ever suffer critical damage, I can easily bring him back. Uh, you got some interesting machinery in here, not the kind that you typically see outside of a corporate setting. Same could be said for many uh, in Hoi. I'm sure that this is a smuggler's den, is it not? Our entire economy is based on people having things they shouldn't. Is there a particular device you're interested in, or out of curiosity? The robotic arm you've got over there. 
that one. Ah, uh, good guess. That's precisely what they are. They fell off a boat, you might say. They weren't cheap, but I acquired them and had them mounted on the walls in my shop. I simply had to have them. The return on investment has been dramatic. Yes, they are cruder by far than the Waldo devices that I used in my professional life, but they still do the job that they are mine. They have increased my fabrication capabilities nearly tenfold, and that, to me, is worth any price. Um, how, how can you afford it? Freelance, at the risk of sounding Im immodest, I've commodified myself rather well. There, they are, there are always corporations in need of design consultation. You'd be surprised how lucrative such work could be. And there is always other work that I can turn to in a pinch. Uh, alright, cool. Nice talking to you, man. Very, uh, interesting dude there. Can I go back here? Is this the door I can open? Oh, hello! Yeah. Where does he sleep? Does he sleep nowhere? I don't understand. Alright, let's hit this computer, get our submission, and we'll get started here. The workstation and mission computer. The cool blue tones of the workstation main menus fill the screen. Uh, let's check the inbox. Six new weapons, new things. Okay, welcome to Hawaii. Cool. All right, resources. Been in instructed to inform you that various suppliers, Auntie Chang has cultivated a commercial district, full stock trustworthy vendors. Emi Kafai and Club 88 is excellent resource for acquiring additional weaponry. Should you require any, if you need for magical supplies, go to the Polar Five Phases. Do a training in the path of the adept. Seek out Spider Shen. Uh, she can help you as well as supply you with any close quarters weapons you might desire. Her melee can supply you with cybernetic enhancements. Oh, okay. Well, this would have saved me a lot of time. <laughs> Alright, uh, this is our mission computer. Cool. Uh, serial killer. If you got a problem, you're going to help me solve it. I do a lot of business with the Wampon... Wampons? Wampons? And you're not familiar with them, I'll forgive you. You're an outsider after all. Wampoans are a tribe of techno-fetishists -fetish and deckers who have taken up residence in Wampoa Garden area of Hong Kong. They make a trade high-tech goods to people from all over the world. A lot of New Yen passes through their pasty little fingers, and I make a lot of money brokering deals between them and smugglers there in Hawaii. Snag, though. The Wampoan elders, the Council of Elders, are being eliminated by a serial killer, and they've asked me to dispatch someone to get to the bottom of it and stop the killings. They're not going. They're not taking their goods through my turf until I do. So you're going to help me by proxy, dear. I don't care how you do it, but I need those murders stopped. The Wampoans have delegate. A del have a delegate. The Wampoans have delegate here in Hayoi by the name of Maximilian Law. Speak with him if you wish to know about Wampoa. He's got a big mouth, but he knows very little of importance. Don't expect much from him. From that half-empty bottle of vinegar. Okay. Get your ass down on Wampoa. All right, we'll take that run. Sounds good to me. Good. I'll tell the elders you're coming. Don't like. They don't like outsiders. They might shoot at you if I don't warn them you're a rival. Cool. All right. Um, what is this? For relevant keywords, uh, that one. Uh, I have a courier job next week that's supposed to take me to the Walled City from Kuala Lumpur. I've been to Hong Kong, but I hear this place is dangerous as hell. Anything I should know? Well, I've got nothing to worry about. It's just a low-cost housing development full of hard-working people. Here, take a look at this news report. This is Sonny Chuang from Horizon News. On today's sunny side up, the Kulong Walt City. A blight on the free enterprise zone and a l or low-cost housing for the economically disadvantaged. We'll introduce you to some of the hard-working residents, how they live, and how they contribute to the growth of our prosper uh, and prosperity of our city. Many residents of Hong Kong regard the Walt City as a place of no return. The outsiders, it's the last stop on a long road to homelessness. Rumors abound of feral ghouls, unsafe living conditions, and triad extortion. Yet, when we went there, the reality was far different. What we saw will shock you, citizens of Hong Kong working and living just like the rest of us. Their apartments were smaller, and their shops more modest, but the people who live here wouldn't be out of place anywhere in the Fez. Citizens like shoemaker Chow Sang Sui. Oh, I love it here. We have a community, you know? We're like a family. Maybe we don't have as nice a view as you do in Repulse Bay, but can't imagine living anywhere else. It's not paradise, no, but 
is home. You know, I grew up here. So how can I possibly leave? Contrary to popular opinion, the Wild City serves as a vital function. The poor and downtrodden find a home in the Wild City, a community where they have a voice, can work, and even prosper. Far from being in the eyesore that, suddenly. Okay, decided to cut the rest of that crap. She keeps going on and on about a good place the Wild City is and how we all need it. Don't buy any of it. It may be, it may not be hell, but you can see it from here. Freedom Cowboys just trying to get you in trouble. So how do you know the real story? Because I grew up there. And you know what it's really like? It's like eating old broth made from the rat bones because there's nothing else. It's watching your neighbors sell their five-year-old son to Oregon leggers so they don't have to starve to death. When you die in the walled city, your neighbors cheer because they'll get the clothes off your back. I wouldn't wish the walled city on my worst enemy. Alright, let's get out of here. Uh, that's all interesting stuff, but I am more interested in getting embroiled in some action right now. Uh, let's go talk to the cyber guy. I know I talked to him earlier, actually. He's kind of a kind of an idiot, but you know, whatever. Law, law. Uh, tell me about Wampoa. It's pretty much the best, yo. What do you want to know? Uh, tell me about the tribe generally. Who are you guys? You really are new to Hong Kong, aren't you? We're the Neo Matrix Collective. We run the Hong Kong Data Haven and the Kong Shadow Nets. We are the Kong Shadow Nets. Oh, we are the Kong Shadow Nets. Outside the corporate nets is the rest of, the rest of the Kong. And in the shadows, you will find the threads of golden light like the vast spider web that carry information. Those golden threads and that web is Wampoa. My buddy Red Storm wrote that. Pretty wicked, huh? Um... Is that tribal? I'm more outspoken, yo. I don't need to meet space rituals. Modesty is inf inefficient. Is that a wampoan thing? For those of us who are more dialed, maybe, we're post-cultural. I hardly see any of this meat space. Our meat space headquarters is a big 20th century ship that's totally awesome. Whatever, it's just meat space. Wampoa is a bleeding edge on the path to becoming the singularity. And in that singularity, there's going to be nothing but straight up truth. Boom! True. Uh, let's do that one. What am I doing here? I'm an ambassador. I broke Wampoa services to the Hanoi. The Hanoi. Emissaries like me are all over the Kong. Tying it together with an invisible network. So you work with Kindly doing tech for the Yellow Lotus. Well, I do some work directly with Kindly, but my focus is more on the street level. We're all a big part of the machine. Each piece playing its crucial role. Ah, and so it is with any highly evolved machine. Exactly. That's why nobody messes with Wampoa. Boom! Does Wampoa provide any technical service for the Hong Kong poor? Sure we do. We run private networks. We service any, our way more than any ordinary people want, though. You can get prepaid bandwidth with a corporate carrier for fractions of a new end, but you're selling your soul. They monitor it. If you want to operate unmonitored by corporate algorithms, you're going to fly through the Wampoa network. It's the only place to be. Wampoans are coders and deckers and for criminals, is that right? We detect for anyone in the Kong, outside a corporate umbrella. Anyone can use our networks if they pass our vetting and can pay for what they bring, or for what we bring. It's mostly the extra legal elements that need our skills. I understand that someone's killing your elders. If this goes grim, a red light blinks on the VR goggles, a lens whirs. Quietly focusing on you, he grinds his teeth, radiating nervousness and intensity. Yeah, shit's crazy, man. Full on, but evil. I can't talk. I can't talk about it. It's a travel matter. Controlled information, right? We're gonna solve it. That's all the outsiders need to know. Actually, I've been contracted by the elders to stop their murders. Wow, really? We're pulling in outsiders? Well, I should have seen that coming. What the hell are you doing here? Go to the garden and help stop that shit. Then come back and tell me what's going on. Everybody's guessing. The elders have been quiet. The rumors hub is going crazy. Outsiders don't understand us. Maybe you can, if you're really smart. We're in the whole different world from most people. Like, I'm seeing three streaming videos and live video network starts in my Google, in my goggles right now. Google's. <laughs> Time's wasting, Steelway. You gonna buy something? Nope, see you later, Law. Alright. Where the hell are we going to? Oh, okay, we gotta go take the, we gotta take the train. Okay, cool. Actually, let's go... Uh, I want to go check out her guns, because I want to get Duncan a new weapon if I can manage it. Uh, let's talk to Henry, I guess. What up? Mm. 
no killing, no no fight, no sex trade. Rules are rules. You're the one who makes them. In part, along with my better half, I'm Henry Cafe, owner of the club. If you're looking for guns, speak to my wife. If you're looking for ferrums, speak to my son. And if you're looking for trouble, you'll speak to my son Frederick. Briefly. Alright, see you later. Uh, so not this guy. That's Callum. If I want to buy, I think, drugs? Possibly? Mm. Let's pop back here. I'm looking for guns. That's what I want. Oh, sweet. What up? Uh... Can I help you? Uh, yeah, sure. You in charge here? And don't you forget it. My family, me and my husband, and our two boys. Now, do you have business with me? I have no time. Sure, what do you got for sale? All right, let's take a look. All righty, cool. Uh, I know that, uh, what's his douche? Um, uses rifles, right? So I'm looking for assault rifles to, to buy. AK-97 with smart link. Am I like, I'm like broke. Damn it. Um, go sell items. We can sell this katana because I bought... No, I need that. I need that. Um, ah, this is shit. Um, I'm using a sword right now. Let's sell killing hands. No, because I should probably be using unarmed, right? Like, I should buy, like, brass knuckles or something. Uh, okay, that sucks. Okay, we'll have to come back then. Uh, ooh, she's got, like, grenades, though. Yeah, we'll have to come back, because I also, I want to get better armor for, um, I want to get better armor for, what's this douche, Duncan. Better armor and a new gun. It'd probably be worth my time to invest in new weaponry for, uh, Isabel and Gobbit as well. But, we'll get to that. We're broke right now, so let's, uh, let's board the train, get ready to go. Head to Wapoo Gardens to discover who's killing the Wampo and Elders. In addition to your team, your fixer has access to a small network of mercenaries in, Quel in the Kowloon area. These runners appear below your core team on a runner selection screen. Head to mission to mission. As you complete missions, both your team members and the available mercenaries will periodically gain access to new equipment and abilities. Any new items, spells, weapons, and weapon abilities that a runner gains will automatically be available for the use in the next time. Take them on a mission. Cool. Let's take. Let's just take our regular crew. I don't see any reason to bring other people because this is a pretty fine assortment she's magic if i'm not mistaken because she's a shaman so she has got like magic attacks and stuff uh, which will be good so i think we're gonna go let's go let's do this all right now we're getting into the meat of the game here we're out of the out of the introductory tutorial and all that stuff and it'll be good all right one well, poet garden a carnival of chrome and neon rife with every manner of technology and art artifice one can imagine. The entire area has the feel of a night market. Save that chip. Uh, chips are sold in lieu of steamed buns and vendors hawk the latest drones rather than folk art. Uh, something stalks these streets, hiding just out of sight. It stalks the Wampo and Elders, the leaders of the of the band of tech-savvy squatters that have claimed the neighborhood as their own. The streets smell of ozone and fear, and those Wampoans you pass in the MTR station have a haunted, furtive look in their eyes. While the killer has struck only the Elders thus far, it may only be a matter of time before ordinary residents are menaced as well. All right. Um, we're good to go. Good to go. I probably should be using, like, unarmed. I could buy, uh, from that snake guy, I can buy brass knuckles, which count as an unarmed ability. Um, which might be a good idea, but whatever. We'll use the sword for now. The street, uh, streets of the Wampoan Garden are slick with rain, glittering under the neon glow of a myriad of signs and holographic displays. The sky reflects the same glow painting the white ap apartment blocks in the sickly orange of sodium streetlight. The smell of grilled meat mingles with other rarer scents, ozone, engine oil, and high-tech fabrication facilities. Despite the, out despite the hour, there are plenty of people out and about, and you can hear the calls of street vendors and touts urging people into their stores. Is there a word for feeling nostalgic for a place you can't wait to leave again? I don't miss this place, but I miss the feeling I had when I lived here. Saudade, maybe? No, uh, that's not... It's, it, it's close, but... Just the sense trail off into nothingness, clapping our mouths shut in a moment. This place seems like heaven after the walled city. Like the whole world has unfurled in front of me, and anywhere I turn, there's a promise of good life. Turned out this place was just as crappy as everywhere else. Everyone was still in it for themselves. This great life lesson is, I'm serious. At the end of the day, life's a raw deal. You've got, you've got yourself, and you've got a handful of friends, and that's it. 
Nothing else. I had some strange ideas about life. Sure, life's a meat grinder, but come on. There's got to be more to it than just surviving. Does there? What makes you the authority on that? I'm done talking about this, anyway. We're looking for the Wampoan Elders. They're going to be in the Wampoa itself. That's the big ship down the street. I've seen pictures. It looks like a yacht. That's the one. Kind of hard to miss, and it's been a fixture since the late last century. These days, it's just a squat. Shops are family affairs, not corporate ones. Is there any anything I should know about the Wampoans? They're all tech heads, tinkerers, and self-taught scientists. Despite the fact that there's no formal education system, everyone here is pretty smart. Uh, they appreciate kids to uh, they apprentice kids to skilled workers so they can learn a trade. Elder Gao taught me decking, and I left after she got brain fried trying to crack a Mitsuhama network. Elder Ip taught me to shoot, and he should still be here. Come on, let's go see what they have to say for themselves. Cool. All right. Uh, we probably won't spend a lot of time trying to buy stuff because I'm not a decker, so uh, you know. There's that. But let's uh, Elder Ng. This orc woman is a is a festooned with small circuits, tiny tried screens, and speakers. The tried screens display snippets of trid broadcasts from every corner of the world. The tiny speakers play counterpoint with Asaurus and voices speaking Suprendi, Punjabi, Kazik, and other languages. Her expression is haggard, and she fidgets with her fingers as you approach. Welcome, welcome to Wanpoa, my friend. I am Elder N G, and these are Elders Dang and Eep. N G refer gestures to the elf and the human who have each inclined their heads respectively. Thank you so much for answering our request for help. We have we had nowhere else to turn. It's the least I could do. We're under threat. One by one, we elders are being hunted by some monster. As you may have noticed, when you arrived, there's been another killing just tonight. The prodigal daughter returned once more. I didn't expect to see you back aboard the Wampoa in, in my lifetime, Isabel. When you disappeared, Elder Yatunde was very put out. Ooh, head's itchy. I'm glad you're still alive. When you chose to walk your own path, I was disappointed, but I still understood why you had to leave. It pauses, tasting the air as he chooses his next words with care. I hope my lessons have helped you prosper. Didn't expect to be back either. Work takes you to places, though. Isabel shrugs. A moment later, she places her hand on her pistol, eyes trained on Ip's shoulder. I don't cart this around for fun, Ip. The lessons kept me alive. Where's Yatunde, anyway? I expected her to be here. She's dead. So are Gan and Nakamura. And Tong was killed just tonight. So much blood. You have to stop this from continuing. That's... That's what we're here for. We'll stop all the killings. Thank you, Isabel. Alright, what can you tell me about the murders? It started two weeks ago. Uh, the first to go was gone. We found him in his apartment, eviscerated. Ooh, uh, he's been torn. Up, he'd been torn apart. His head had been ripped for completely off, and his, most of his skin flayed away. Uh, there was so much blood it took us a week to clean out his apartment. The rest have been the same. Always at night. Always dismembered. Each scene is like a nightmare. And every time, nobody has seen anything. It's like a ghost. Um, okay, so what happened to Tong? The same thing as what happened to the rest of the victims, vishvation and dismemberment. We sent a guard to keep people out of a shop, but he'll let you in. When did he die? Sometime early tonight, he locked up his shop, but Ip stopped by to ask him about some skill chips he had. The door was unlocked, and inside... Well, yeah. Inside looked like a bad horror sim, just like all the other murders. Uh, it had to happen after sundown, because I saw his shop was open when I was on my way to get some noodles for dinner. Why didn't you call the police? Hong Kong police forces are welcome here. They have tried to force us out several times before, or come hunting for someone to pin a crime on. We do a lot of efforts for local gangs and triads, handle their matrix security, fix up their gear, and make sure they have access to Hong Kong Shadow Labs hub. Uh, we're too valuable a resource for them to lose, so they protect us from the HKPF, or anyone else deciding we're an easy target. They handle our physical security, and we make sure to send messages via the network. The last time the HKPF made trouble, we started uh, airing the assistant chief's dirty laundry over the trid, uh, and they got the picture backed off. Okay, uh, have you made any enemies lately? None that I can think of. We keep to ourselves, we buy and sell technology, we're not mercenaries or criminals, we're merchants and deckers, and even if someone was cheated in a deal, this kind of response is unthinkable. But whatever did this, it wasn't human, the violence is... The violence and savagery, it's a monster, whatever it is. Plenty of metahumans and monsters, too. And gee, just because it's horrible doesn't mean it's supernatural. 
Okay, uh, what do you guys do? They make the rules and kick people out who don't obey them. They're a bunch of petty tyrants, that's all. They're being unfair, Isabel. Our laws are for the good of the community. We keep the Wampoans and its residents safe. And we review trade agreements with outsiders to see if they're good for the community. We provide a, a guiding vision like a town council. All right, I can respect that. I'm glad you understand. The community is fragile and the authorities bear us a lot of ill will. A single misstep could spell our end. I am the invoker of spirits. I commune with the spirits of machines, ask them for blessings, and pass those blessings on to the people here. I heal the sick and ensure the feng shui of our habitats is as good as it can be given our confines. She's a shaman, that's all. She's just got some kooky spins on it. Claims her totems is some kind of all-encompassing machine god that lives in circuitry. Ancient gods and ancestors are one thing. My deck, it's mine. I built it. The only spirit it's gotten in it are the ESPs I load up. Just because you cannot see or touch a thing does not mean that it doesn't exist. Just because you do not believe in it does not mean it does not protect you from afar. You can't touch my programs either, but at least I can prove that they are effective on the physical world. Your superstitions are just that. Bullshit. This guy treats drones like they're living things. Alright, is that right? I am the first in Glorious Servo. I study the patterns and repair machinery and teach others how to attune themselves. Okay, that's, yeah, okay. It's for me, I'm a splendid voltage spike. That means I shoot people who try to screw with us. It's a fancy title for head of security. Okay, cool. Uh, it might be wise to ask the residents of Wampoa Garden if they've seen or heard anything after you've gone to Tonk Sensory Carnival. Uh, they have... They may have seen or heard things we have not. Okay, good to know. All right. Uh, interesting. So we're sort of uh, we're on track to solve these murders. Uh, so I guess uh, I'm gonna leave the episode here. There's another another episode full of uh, nice exposition and lots of talking. So uh, I'm gonna leave the episode here. Uh, so thank you all for watching. If you like what you saw, let me know. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date on when I post more videos. And if you really like what you saw, leave a like. It helps the channel grow. It helps me out a great deal. And of course, with that, thank you all for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!